Assalamu alaikum. I hate to be the bearer of bad news to you, O oh, ex Muslim. You're not special. <laughs> I know they have gashed your head up. They have you thinking you're special. But in reality, you're not special. You're special, kind of like um, a bearded lady special. Or the monkey man is special. Or the man in the iron lung, he's special. Like a circus attraction. A circus act. You know, come down to the circus and see somebody unusual, different. That's basically what you are. These people who invite you to be on some show or come speak or subscribe to your channel and leave uh, seemingly positive comments on your video you think they're giving you attraction they're giving you attention because you are somebody but you're only somebody because you're willing to come out in public and trounce around and call yourself an ex-muslim and talk about talk bad about your former community talk bad about your family members talk bad about your own culture you're willing to justify the prejudice and hatred of the dominant culture you're willing to legitimize islamophobia you're willing to legitimize the false conception that some of your audience has that they have exceptionalism above and beyond the rest of the human race and everyone else you're willing to to reduce their guilt because we, the human nature is when you do something wrong you feel guilty so a lot of these people feel strong guilt but seeing you <laughs> Someone who looks different from them, someone who is different, one of the people that they have disdain and prejudice towards, you look like them, you come from them, seeing you parrot their talking points and say the same thing they're saying and spewing the same hate that they spew, it makes them feel better. So you're being used like tissue. You are dirty Kleenex. You're not special. I'm telling you, take it from me because I'm a former ex-Muslim who returned back to Al-Islam. These people will use you until they use you up. And once they use you up, they'll discard you and forget all about you. Remember Ergen Kanner? When's the last time you seen Ergen Kanner? When's the last time you heard about Ergen Kanner? Where is he at? What is he doing? He got used up. No, he probably had, he's somewhere being some type of president of some type of c-list bible college but nobody cares about that man anymore nobody wants to read it if he came out with a, with a book nobody's going to want to read it but when he first came out and he told all these tales about being a terrorist and you know and a jihadi and all this other stuff everybody wanted to hear him speak everyone wanted to read his book all these companies wanted to give him a book contract why? Because he was, he was not only willing to embarrass himself and embarrass his, embarrass his family in public, talking this ex-Muslim trash, he was willing to lie. See, that's another part of it. So when these people give you these quote-unquote opportunities to be on their television show and get book deals and be somebody to the, um, to the evangelical audience, the pressure is put on you to exaggerate your life story. You know, put a little spice into it. Now, me personally, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Uh, but as we have seen, <laughs> there are plenty of so-called ex-Muslims who are more than willing to do such things. And to not just put some spice into it, but I mean, to totally fabricate a whole entire um, narrative and biography and get exposed for it and then they dump you 
when you get exposed and then they go find another one like uh, Ice Cube used to say they'll have a new one next year they'll just get another another ex-Muslim next year when they discard you and get rid of you and they're done with you see you think see you were a nobody in your old community see when you were a Muslim you were a nobody nobody knew who you were nobody wanted to hear what you had to say you weren't a student of knowledge you weren't a, you weren't a, you were not an imam nobody was ever going to give you a book deal nobody was going to invite you to speak no one was going to sub your channel or watch your videos but now that you're an ex-muslim now you have something to say you have something to say that some that people want to listen to all of a sudden that should tell you right there they don't care about you they're not watching your video because you are so smart and you are so special the con the, the, the content that they're willing to see is the dancing ex-muslim monkey <laughs> that's who you are that's you know the the it's the total embarrassment the 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 sludge that's what they're willing to pay attention to that's why they keep coming they'll get rid of you and go get someone else and have them do and give him give him or her the attention and look how you have to degrade yourself look at how you have to degrade yourself and sell your soul to keep getting their attention now at a certain point when i was an ex-muslim i was pretty i was done with all that i i you didn't see me around David Wood or Sam Shimon and all these people. Even though I was still hosting um, Jesus or Muhammad and different shows for ABN. But I was pretty much low key. But then came the, the, part, the, the part where I was just completely done with all of that stuff. That was when David Wood called me up on the telephone and asked me, to participate in his video Islamicize me. He wanted me to, he was gonna fly me out. <laughs> he was gonna flew me out, <laughs> as, the, as the youth say. He was gonna fly me out to Phoenix. And you know, what did they want me to do? What you see those other quote unquote minorities on that particular video series doing. They want you to put on a thobe and a, and a turban, and speak with a, a Arabic accent. So basically, they want you to put on blackface or Arab face. You know, it's no different. There's, there's zero difference. Some of you guys were willing to do that. I just wasn't willing to do that. You wanted to be around the top apologists so bad. You wanted to be a part of it. You wanted to boost your, your brand and your career. I didn't. It wasn't that important to me. It was extremely important to you. And so... That should tell you about the character of a lot of these ex-Muslims. That it's about clout. It's clout chasing. No different than a young girl dancing and gyrating on a TikTok video. You're no different. You are not special. Get a grip.